the mid-latitudes of the southern hemisphere, where nights are warming and shortening. From October to December, our viewpoint for the night sky. It's mid-evening and we're looking north. The Milky Way is a misty band on the horizon. Immediately above, with its great square, is Pegasus, the winged horse. Alpha Rats is the star lost to neighboring Andromeda, the beautiful princess. Low in Andromeda, and equally beautiful, M31, the Andromeda galaxy. Visible by naked eye and the largest in our local group, Andromeda resembles the Milky Way. Above Pegasus and Andromeda lies Pisces, the fishes, a constellation of the zodiac. Here in the southern hemisphere, Pisces is the site of the autumn equinox, where the sun crosses the celestial equator from south to north. 2,000 years ago, it happened in Aries, but Earth's slight wobble has shifted the transition. Beneath Aries, Triangulum, the triangle. And lower still, Perseus, the hero who saved Andromeda. Above is Aldebaran, brightest star of Taurus the Bull, with the Pleiades, or Pleiades, to the left, the most famous open star cluster in the sky. Two stars in the square of Pegasus signpost Fomalo. Just 22 light years away, Fomalo is twice the size of the Sun and 13 times as luminous. As the beacon of Piscis austrinus, the southern fish, Fomalo is well named the fish's mouth. For in the disk that surrounds the star, a mouth could be opening where material clumps into planets. Down from Piscis Austrinus is Aquarius, the water bearer, a constellation of the zodiac. Right from Piscis Austrinus, the dim pattern of Sculptor, supposedly a sculptor's workshop. Although its stars are of little interest, Sculptor has two fine examples of edge-on galaxies, astronomically fairly rare phenomena. The first is NGC 55, good in binoculars, a big telescope can resolve individual stars. Another galaxy, oblique rather than edge-on, is the cartwheel. It looks this way because an intruder careened through, creating a great ripple of stars. The culprit, possibly a small galaxy to the right. The cartwheel needs a large telescope. Unlike Sculptor's second edge-on spiral, NGC 253, at about 10 million light years, it's fine in binoculars. Still looking north from the southern hemisphere, we close on a faint set of stars that include Deneb Katos and Myra. This is Cetus, the constellation of the whale. Upward and right is Fornax, the furnace. Despite its name, nothing glows in Fornax, but powerful telescopes reveal galaxies. This one, NGC 1316, is a cannibal devouring other galaxies. It's a member of the Fornax cluster, a compact group 60 to 65 million light years distant. Many are elliptical galaxies, but not this one, NGC 1365, a classic barred spiral some 200,000 light years across. Lastly, in the northern sky, a couple of important constellations. The first is the hunter, Orion, with its bright stellar markers, Rigel and Betelgeuse. The second is often overlooked because of its faintness and length, Eridanus, the river. At this season, it runs from way overhead to near Orion's star, Rigel. In a loop of the river is the galaxy NGC 1300, a barred spiral, but visible only in larger telescopes. Nearby, the same goes for NGC 1232, twice as wide as the Milky Way. The Northern Sky. This is the panorama south from the mid-latitudes of the southern hemisphere. To the east, the sky is dominated by the stars Canopus and Sirius. As the brightest star of all, Sirius marks Canis Major, the big dog. 
Likewise, Carina, the ship's keel, is flagged by Canopus. In between is Puppis, poop deck of the legendary ship Argo Navis. Below are its sails, Vela. Supposedly, Jason sailed Argo Navis in search of the Golden Fleece. Before it was divided, Argo Navis was the biggest constellation. High in the heavens, two bright stars, Rigel and Achenar, mark either end of Eridanus, the celestial river. Part of it meanders overhead into the northern sky. Beneath is Columba, in mythology, the dove released by Jason and the Argonauts. To the right, Calum, the two stars of the chisel. And still farther right, Horologium, faint and obscure, the constellation of the clock. It honours the pioneering of the pendulum clock by the Dutch astronomer Christian Huygens. Horologium has at least two treasures, the globular cluster NGC 1261, whose stars can be resolved in a moderate telescope, and at the eastern end of the pattern, the galaxy NGC 1512, a magnificent barred spiral. Discernible in binoculars, this image is from Hubble. West from Horologium, high in the sky, is the stellar beacon of Fomalo. Between Fomalo and Achenar is Phoenix, the mythical bird, but more like a moored riverboat. In this sector of the southern sky, stargazing is like bird watching. With Phoenix at the top, the water bird Grus is nearby, the pattern of the crane. Below, toward the horizon, is Parvo the peacock. And completing the flock, Tucano, the constellation of the Toucan. Upper right, Fomalo marks Piscis ostrinus, the southern fish, while below, honouring native North Americans, is Indus. This is the region of the Magellanic Clouds, two misty patches that are satellite galaxies of our Milky Way. With the large Magellanic Cloud on the left, we head for its lesser companion. On a good night, the small cloud is visible by naked eye, but there's no missing the object on the right. Unconnected with the cloud, this is the globular cluster 47 Tucani, second largest and second brightest of its kind. At this season, the Magellanic clouds make excellent observing. They're either side of Hydrus, the triangle of the little water snake. Above the large cloud is reticulum, the reticle, a device for measuring star positions. A wider view shows the goldfish, Dorado, with its tail flicking the large cloud. Toward the head, NGC 1566, a Seyfert galaxy. The brilliant nucleus is like a quasar, but less energetic. Mensa, the table is a bookend with Dorado as they unfold the large Magellanic cloud and its 10 billion stars. Through binoculars and small telescopes, the LMC reveals clusters and individual stars. Pink nebulae of hydrogen gas are regions of stellar birth. The biggest is the Tarantula Nebula. Lower right, some massive stars destined to go supernova. And here, the largest, hottest, and most massive stars ever seen. In 1987, a supergiant exploded in the LMC. For weeks, it could be seen by naked eye. These are its shock waves, the first ever photographed. Years later, this is the remnant of that cosmic flash. The LMC, our companion galaxy, is quite a showcase. This graphic guide to the heavens is complete.